classic for a cult to want the love only me precept. You must only love the cult, the movement and the guru. Having relations of any sort with anyone else is more or less deemed a threat. Your love and devotion should be only for the, the action and activity of the cult. Scientology is particularly hard on this. Um, the no baby rule was just given out with the cracking of a whip. In fact, they got so carried away in the 70s, they put out an issue call, um, describing the punishment you would get if you had got, if a woman got pregnant. And it came out on a golden paper and it said, if you, anyone who gets pregnant will be shipped off to Mexico to a failing org. But it became a flap because Mexico was being positioned as a third world country. And many Mexicans got very offended. And then they quickly withdrew the issue like, <laughs> this was like uh, <laughs> the slur. <laughs> You're pregnant, go to Mexico. That's what the issue said. Till it was um, taken back for PR reasons. People were still shipped, shipped to Mexico. But a lot of publicity about it was withdrawn. What is it? What is it? The reason no babies is because it took away from production. People are supposed to slave. They're supposed to bring in money for the mother church. They're supposed to work, work, work. Not take time having kids. Not take a demand an hour off family time. In the, in the, in, in the mid 80s, late 80s, they cut off family time altogether. There's this good issue, which you should read called Sea Org Babies. The final solution. Here it is. I remember when we were all herded into the biggest room in Big Blue and people eat there and we were all herded in and CMO, Commodore Messengers, had a special briefing, mandatory vital briefing and in this briefing we were told no more babies. None. We are here to clear the planet. That meeting was horrendous, to say the least. After the meeting, everyone was given a piece of paper and it was a kind of a survey and you had to fill out what your intentions were regarding procreation. Were you going to have a baby? And some people said yes. That meeting in 1988-89 caused the biggest departure from the Sea Org in any given span of time that I remember. And because they were so adamant on no kids, it was relatively easy to go. You want a child? Get out of here. We are the true blue saving the planet. So part, so I'm taking you through this. Horrendous things were done at Inbase to young girls in their 20s who got pregnant. Read this from a director of Planned Parenthood. Read this.
People were punished by being sent to the dreaded old Gilman house known as OGH. OGH on the west side of the property was the punishment detention center. Maureen Bolstead spent three years there. I was stuck there and I had somebody watching me always 24 hours a day. I had to have a buddy with me. I had someone shining a flashlight in my face at night while I was sleeping every two hours to make sure I was still in bed. Um, on the few occasions that I did manage to run away, I was tackled and brought back physically. I basically said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm fed up with this. If you guys don't let me out of here, I'm just going to stop eating and sleeping. I'm just going to die because, you know, I wanted, I wanted my freedom. <laughs> I didn't like being treated like a prisoner when I'd done absolutely nothing wrong besides, you know, not wanting to work there anymore for nothing. It's a kind of a, it was a ghostly, spooky place. And it and videos watched you even when you went to the, I mean, just videos of it. It was, it was a, when you were sent there, you were in disgrace. You were lower than mud. You were an amoeba or a cell. And women were sent there just because they were pregnant. Here's a little excerpt from Claire Headley on it. I was made to have two abortions. One was at the age of 19 when I was working in Golden Era Productions in California. Um, the second was when I was 21 years old um, I, when I was working in Clearwater in Religious Technology Center. There was two instances in the entire time that I was there where I saw um, a, women actually try and go against that. And in those cases, those women were on heavy labor, uh, washing dishes day and night. The other one was digging ditches while pregnant, you know, being paid $46 a week, if that um, makes birth control um, a financial burden, to put it mildly. Um, I did not intend to get pregnant. I did. Um, it was with my husband. Um, you know, at the time that it happened, absolutely, I was completely and utterly devastated. I never in my wildest dreams um, would have gone through with that, and uh, I will always regret that. Um, nonetheless, um, I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Um, if I had said, I'm not going to do this, I would have been separated from my husband. Um, I, you know, I, the, the possibilities were endless. Um, I knew I would have had serious punishments levied. I would have been on manual labor. I was concerned for what would happen to my child. Um, so I did not have a choice. I ended up getting married at 16. In the Sea Org, that's very common because you really can't do anything physically with the person that you're dating or whatever until you're married. And I got married, and I would wanted kids. I would said that when I joined the Sea Org, I was planning on having children. And I'm about to talk to you about something that is extremely personal, but I'm bringing this to light because it shows how extreme they are are when it comes to keeping their people and controlling them. And that is in regards to having children. I actually became pregnant in February 1996 um, with full intention of having a kid with my husband. She started pushing how important my job was, how it would be so detrimental to the organization if I were to leave, how neither me or my husband had any money, nor would we when we left if we had children. And after two days of this, of constant pressure and, uh, you know, being threatened with the fact of if I left, I would have no money, I would have no life. There's, you know, most people, even at an older age, don't succeed. I had no schooling. There would be no way that I would be able to support a child. And 
that was what they were continually repeating to me. I know for a fact I would have been able to support a child if I had gone through with it. Um, but after you know days of this, I conceded and um, had an abortion. I said, look, if anyone says to me the word abortion, I will not come back. I don't want to hear it. And I was just really mad. I said, I don't want to hear it. No one better speak to me about it. I'll just hang up. I refuse to speak to anyone. I will not cooperate. I said, otherwise I will. Who were these people talking to you? There was, um, uh, oh God, what's his name? It's, um, <laughs> I forgot his name. He was, he was a very high up executive. But there was he, his job was also the chaplain because that was one of the, the posts underneath him that was unfilled. So he was doing it from the chaplain point of view, chaplain telling you to get an abortion. His name will come to me in a minute. Okay. But um, then I spoke to a woman named Kirsty Wilhare, who was like my senior senior. And I spoke to um, a girl who was a friend of mine and my husband's friend. And I spoke to a man named Jeff Porter, who's the chief of security international. I know Jeff. Yeah, so do I. I know Jeff. I have other things to say. But um, yeah, he was just like, you come back or you get declared. Kirsty was nice and saying, just come back, let's sort it out. Um, the other man whose name will come to me was the one who mentioned abortion. I said, don't ever mention it again. But my mother continuously mentioned it regularly. You should get an abortion. What am I going to tell Zoe? You should get an abortion. How are you going to raise the baby? You should get an abortion. You should get an abortion. You should get an abortion. Just repeatedly. How old was Zoe at that point? 13, probably 12 or 13. That was what got to me the most was the sister thing because I didn't know she didn't want to be there and I thought I had just ruined her entire life's plan and messed everything up for her. Because you two couldn't talk about this either. No. In fact, my mom never even told Zoe about it. So pregnancy, babies, and taking one-hour family time was considered out ethics or you having other fish to fry than beating the drum for the Church of Scientology, making the money for the Church of Scientology, working like a slave for no pay for the Church of Scientology. This was other fish you are frying. 